Alright, welcome back guys to part 3 of making an obby and today we are going to be adding a data store to our game so that you can finally save those game stages so that when your players leave they will keep their data and won't have to restart when they come back to the game. Let's get started. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go to game settings and go under security. Now you want to enable studio access to API services. This will allow you to access the data store service. So we'll turn that on and save the settings right, we're then going to go under the player join script and we're going to modify it all right so the first thing we want to do is we want to access the data store service so we can do that by doing local data store service equals game get service data store service all right then we can create a stage data store to hold all our data so we can do local stage data store equals data store service get data store stage data store now the next thing we want to work on is the save function so we're gonna go down here and create a new function called save and we're going to pass the parameter player inside it we'll do local player user ID equals player dot user ID We'll then create a table for the data that we want to save. So inside it, we'll just have a variable called stage. So we'll do stage equals server storage, wait for child, player data, wait for child, player user ID. And we do wait for child player user ID because we create a folder with the user ID as the name for the player. Wait for child stage dot value. We'll do a local success error message. We'll basically use a repeat loop to continuously save the data until we successfully saved it to the data store. So we'll do success error message equals he call function stage data store set async player user ID data. And we repeat until success. Basically, the data store has a list of keys inside and each of these keys contain data. So we want to look for the key with the player's user ID and we want to save the data that we have to the data store. Then we do if success, then we'll just print that we successfully saved the data. Else we will print error while saving we'll warn error message now the next thing we want to do is we want to modify this top section over here instead of connecting the stuff inside the block to the player added event we want to make that its own function so we'll do local function load player let me just remove that bracket at the end there so instead of running this code when a player joins, we'll run it when this function is called. So let me just make a variable for the player ID, local player ID equals player dot user ID. We're going to get rid of this second line over here and get rid of current stage dot value. Now under this changed event, we're going to add a new section. So we're going to do local data and then local success error message. Now we're going to use another repeat while loop here. So we'll do success error message equals p call function. And then we'll set data equals to stage data store get async player user ID. So now we're retrieving the data from the data store using the key which is their player ID. We want to repeat until success or not game dot players find first child player dot name. We want to repeat this until we successfully retrieve the data or the player left the game. We'll do if success then if data. So data will equal true when they've previously played the game. So we want to load what data they had before. So we want to set current stage dot value equals data dot stage. 
and it's equal to data.stage because we saved the variable stage under the data table down here. Alright, so if they don't have any data, we'll just give them a stage value of 1. So they start at the beginning. And then we will set their respawn location. And we'll set it to the current stage that they're on. So game.workspace.spawns current stage dot value. Last thing we want to do here is we want to get the character. So local character equals player dot character or player dot character added weight. And we want to move the character to where their current stage is. So character weight for child humanoid root part. Dot C frame equals game dot workspace dot spawns current stage dot value dot C frame and then offset it by like three studs. So vector three dot new zero three zero. We want to connect the player added event and the player removing event to each function. So when a player joins, we want to load the data, and when a player leaves, you want to save that player's data. So we'll do game.players.player added connect function player, and we want to load the data for this player. And same thing for when a player leaves. So we do game.players.player removing connect function player. You want to save the data of the player that's leaving. All right, now one thing we have to be careful of is when the game shuts down. So we want to make sure that the data saves even if Roblox like doesn't update or something. So we'll do game bind to close connect function game bind to close function. First thing we want to do is we want to check if it's currently in studio. So game get service run service is studio then return. So we don't want to run the following code if it's in studio because we don't have to. So we'll do local finished equals instance dot new bindable event. We'll do local all players equals game dot players get players do local left players e equals number of all players and we'll iterate through all the players so in i pairs all players do coroutine dot wrap function we want to save each player's data we'll subtract one from the amount of players that are left and if the amount of players that are left is equal to zero, then we will fire the bindable event. And make sure to add the brackets because of the coroutine. So finished dot event wait. And we'll print that we've successfully saved everyone's data. So we completed shutdown data saving. Now we just want to load everyone's data to begin with. So we want to iterate through all the players and we want to load everyone's data. And the last thing we want to do is we want to implement an auto saving system. So we'll have a while loop that will save everyone's data every five minutes. So we'll iterate through all the players. We will save their data. Okay, so let's run the finished code. Alright, so I start off at stage one. All 
Alright, so now I'm stage 2. Now let me open the output window first. And now I'm going to leave the game. So it tells us that the game has successfully saved the stage data. So when I join the game again, it should load my data and it should say that I'm on stage 2. So let's run it again. And it says I'm stage 2. And it puts me on the second stage as spawn point. Something to note is that in studio, the player removing event doesn't always fire, so the data doesn't always save inside studio. But you don't need to worry about that because it always fires in game. And that's about it for part 3. In the next episode, we will show you the completed product. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.